Oh, hey, we're live. All right. I knew that. 404 guy here, 7 he 404 gy back with some Kerbal Space program before we get into that episode, though. Just a quick reminder. What the hell is that? Warning. This program contains coarse humor and a sense of language that some people might not share. Viewer discretion is advised. Sorry about that. Uh, although, thank you for watching, if you are. <laughs> Alright. Any missions today? We'll rescue Ike. Bring a D to Jewel. Plant a flag on Eve. Temperature survey surveys of Tilo. Tilo's a, a heck of a difficult one to get to. I tell you what. Now... Uh, no, I don't think any of that'll work. We're gonna go to Moho. Moho. Moho on Moho. What? What? <coughs> Excuse me. So before we get there, just a quick note. We got this guy here, right? This guy's got like friggin' electric and stuff. We got stuff as far away as Jewel. I started to think, you know. What if we want to communicate directly with Jewel with a single satellite? And it, like just maybe bring like a 5k relay from Jewel or something. So we're just gonna quickly build a little relay antenna here. I'm gonna put this little guy into orbit. How many is this? This is like four, six, eight hundred, that's like twelve hundred G antennas. Alright, all we need now is a way of putting him into orbit. Uh which I'm thinking it's just going to be, we're just going to hammer this guy. Put this on. Put on this Keter Brind thing, and I I have no reservations about spending money now. As I've gotten so far. It's like, yeah, $12 million we're spending on this thing. Ain't no thing. But I do need this tape thingy to work. Why won't it work? Okay, it won't connect to anything. There's nothing for it to connect to. Uh, her. Anything in there? Nothing. Well, we'll just hope that it sticks, to, it sticks together. Uh, get rid of that. As for aerodynamics, we don't need much in terms of control. So a few little winglets ought to be enough. And with any luck, we're just going to punch this into orbit and then we're going to go to Moho. That's That's the plan. Punch this thing into orbit. Oh, oh. Oh, there we go. Oof. It crashed. I thought it crashed. Well, I thought it. All right. This engine is disappointing me in many ways. This is not by any means a heavy satellite. Uh... It's producing good thrust. How heavy is this thing? I guess the fuel tank is heavy. Use your mosquitoes. Huh. Well, that's a lot slower than I thought it would be. I was uh, kind of messing around on Kerbal Space Program just before this, doing some land speed attempts. Um, I managed to get someone up to, I can get up to, like, Mach 5, but once you're going past Mach 5 in atmosphere on Kerbal Space Program, it just rips apart. It's like yesterday, like, it, it would hit Mach 5, but it could not push past, no matter what I did. So I'm, uh, I'm thinking how I can, uh, how I can push it further. I want to try and get Mach 10. If we can get Mach 10 in Kerbal Space Program, that'd be like, that'd practically be, I don't know, that's like escape velocity, isn't it? Escape velocity at ground level. That would be awesome. Um, I think it's rather obvious by now that this is not going to go well. So, let's warp this a little bit further. Here we go. Awesome, awesome. All right. 
Oh, come on. We're still in atmosphere here. All right, there we go. You think this will actually make orbit? I don't know. I have my doubts. But with 100 G's worth of antennas, it better do something. At least make a cool splash or something. I don't know. All right, there we go. Perfect. Oh, come on, buddy. Yeah, buddy, you're not going to get it. No, you're not. Not even close. You're like... Well... No. I'm going to go ahead and say that's a no for me, Captain. Yeah. Would have been cool, actually. Now, if I think about it, technically we do have additional fuel on board. It's just inaccessible. Um, how do we access it? We're going to get this thingy. Enable the cross feed. Whoa, hello. How are we doing there? Anything, anything. Oh, my God. Gosh, that is so close. I'm willing to say that's like 99%. What is the uh, network on this thing looking like? Look at this guy. He's literally connected to every single satellite that I have everywhere. Oh, well. Revert to vehicle assembly. We're going to Moho. So I'm thinking... If I take the same spacecraft that I put around Jewel, we take that to Moho, that'll probably do it. Where is it? Jewel Interceptor. 300,000. Ooh, boy. Yeah, she's a pricey one. Uh, we don't need this. There's no atmosphere. Uh, we got some temperature stuff. That's good. That's lovely. We've got the nuclear engine. That'll get us the majority of the way. We've got some communications. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. That got us to Jewel. It'll get us to Mool. To Mool. To Mool. Wow. That'll get us to Mool. And to Moho, I suppose. To Mool is an asteroid somewhere orbiting Moho, which may or may not exist. Um in the context of actual reality. Yipes, that's a loud one. All right. Am I even taking off in the right direction? I don't think so. Aye, that's a loud one. All right. Uh, I don't know if we're in the right direction, and frankly, my ears can't take it anymore. Why you gotta be like that, engines? So loud. All right, so we'll just get this uh, get this guy into orbit, and uh, then we'll start doing our adjustments. I cannot get close to this thing with the engines the way they are. I can't look at its trajectory. Nothing. These engines are just just way too loud. But they are efficient at high atmospheric pressure, so they are a necessary evil. How are they doing anyway? Yeah, they're doing all right. Look at that, that's 1,000 meters per second. We're in atmosphere, aren't we? So if we can get 1,000 meters per second in atmosphere at 30,000, then getting it at like 10,000, well, I guess that would be a little bit more difficult because you got a lot of other stuff to consider. Especially the increased drag. Okay, fair enough. All right, this should be almost done. Very close to it. And there we go. Get rid of this. Thank you. Get rid of these guys. Uh, thank you. Just kind of squirt that guy a little bit. Thank you. Uh, we should have put some kind of stabilizer on there. Thank you. Dreadle, dreadle, dreadle. Okay, there we go. All right. Cha-ching, bada-bing, baby. That'll work. So, how is our trajectory looking now? Very weird. Let's make it look weirder. So this thing got us to Jewel. 
on like a single shot slingshot off from uh, from Kerbin. Kind of like a slingshot. It got us to Jewel. Took us like a couple of years. Something crazy like that. But it got us there. Next, we gotta get this, uh, gonna get this sucker here to Moho, which I don't think has an atmosphere, and I think is gonna require a lot more fuel than I'm giving myself credit for, because it's this little guy down here. Look at how close to the sun we're gonna get, man. It reminds me of that time I took the, uh, it was on a live stream, I, I had to cancel the live stream just to, just to sit for two hours while the, uh, the little ion engines did their work. Got us into orbit of the sun. Low orbit. Like, we could practically hit the atmosphere. But it blew up long before getting anywhere close. So that sun is going to be an interesting one to try and land on. If we try to land on it, that is. Okay, how are we looking here? Alright, alright. We can leave with that, I think. Set that as our target. If we try and hit it from here, that'll be like the best, absolute best possible scenario, is if we hit it on the ascending or deascending nodes. How good is this? Not very, apparently. But we have we have enough fuel for that, because look at this. This is lovely. It calculates the uh, fuel requirements for us. Nothing. Not even a dreidel. Not even a dreidel. Hmm. How sad. Doesn't tell us how much fuel we're gonna use. Let me try it from here. This is a seven degree angle that we're trying to, to boop this thing on. It's not gonna work out well. I just wanna see where in the orbit this thing's gonna hit. Ah. It will not tell me. It will not tell me, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. I would not like them in a boat. I would not like them while I tote. Okay, well, that's good enough. Let's, uh, whoops. Ah, what am I clicking? Why do I keep... I click everything. All right, we're good, we're good. We good. How's my dreidel? It's doing all right. All right, and our Sentinel mission is doing just fine, too. Love it. Absolutely love it. That Sentinel mission is basically just free money. Like, there's... No reason to do anything else in Kerbal Space Program. If you have a Sentinel mission, that'll get you free money, basically. Worth, like, millions. Millions of worth. All right, we actually have a lot of fuel. And a very light spacecraft. So let's get, uh, let's get Dreidel here. All nice and lined up. Ooh. Dreidel, you are not very stable. Not a stable Dreidel. Okay, well that should be... Okay, there we go. Stabilized. Ready. Mark. Set. That's much quieter. Alright, Dreidel. You are going to Moho. No matter how you complain, it is your home. And you must go. Because I will not accept anything else. Alright. We're looking good. Looking pretty good. I should really be practicing for the uh, presentation that I have to give. Let, let me let me let me practice a little bit. So you, you're taking an entropy function, you're integrating it, and then you're differentiating it, but with respect to something else then uh, I don't know what the crap and then you get a, a, a cool thing happening and I think I'm gonna do just well on this presentation man I think I'm gonna do perfectly well all right all right dreadle you are very close how much fuel oh plenty fuels are plenty all right Okay, young Dreidel. I really want to get this ascending node down. I think that's going to be my next goal. Just bloop it. 
That's like seven degrees. It's crazy. Okay, I think this... Yeah, this is saying we're going to run out of fuel halfway through. All right, that will get the radle at zero. That's actually very close, that target. Wow. I'm impressed. Okay, dreidel. Uh, point at your maneuver as well, if you don't mind. And what we will do, we'll warp there. Um... All right. Pointing in that normal and anti-normal direction is actually a very good strategy if you're orbiting the sun. Because it more or less guarantees the sun's going to be coming from one of those coordinate directions. As opposed to if you're pointing uh, east-west, then your solar panels might be in the nighttime for half the year, and that would cause a problem. All right, we can see that Sentinel mission making us money. Awesome. All right, Dreadle. Here we go. So we should, asterisk, have enough fuel. I say asterisk because I really don't have much faith in this mission. Dreadle in three, two, one. Awesome. All right. All right, this should be... I mean, I don't technically need to reduce the ascending node that much. I could just get it kind of close, such that we can get caught in the, uh, in the gravitational pull, or the sphere of influence, as it is referred. Beep! All right. Out of fuel. Let's boop. And away we go. Thank you, ma'am. A minute of burn time remains. But I mean, that's really, that's not a huge angle that we gotta do there. In the slightest. It's looking good. It's looking just great. The next thing, we gotta bring this Apogee in. Which I'm gonna focus on in... Apparently a minute. If we uh, focus view on... Well, we can get a little bit of information on in there. So, it's brown-ish. Apparently, it doesn't have a surface. Or an ocean. Or an atmosphere. It's apparently 0.2 Gs and has a sphere of influence of 9,000 kilometers. Escape velocity, 1,000 meters per second. Cool. Very nice, very nice. Okay. How are we looking here? This is pretty close. That sphere of influence, though, is pretty small. This is roughly the size of not so much a planet, but more like a, like a moon sort of deal. That's the size of the thing we're trying to hit. All right, we're... You know what? I'm going to say that's close enough. We can't hit the moon from that distance. We're crazy. Ah, not 0.3 degrees. We'll live. Let's bring Dreidel in here. All right, Dreidel. Oh no! We don't have enough, uh. enough what's it? Okay. We'll keep going in this direction, we'll bring this down, and then we'll try to do a gravity assist. If we can. Alright, Dreidel, getting close. Banzai! There we go, cha ching! Okay. Point ourselves anti-grade. How is this uh, closest approach going to adjust? Not at all. Uh, can I go here and adjust it? Ah, we can. Lovely. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Okay. Oh, God, I can taste blood. It's not a good taste. Well, it is a great, it's decent, I don't know. I can taste blood. I don't want to. There we go. Okay, so that'll get us onto an encounter. And it doesn't cost us a lot. The hope is, if we can get an encounter, 
we can adjust that perigee to such an extent that we don't have to uh, worry so much about running out of fuel. That's the hope, anyway. Whether or not it'll work out that way, anyone's guess. All I know is that this thing's got still 100% signal strength. Wow. That's direct. That's direct to Kerbin. Where is this? This thing's at Moho, and it's getting a direct connection to Kerbin there. Like, these antennas are insane. Which is why I'm thinking I might try to put, like, a, uh, one of those 100G antennas just orbiting the sun. But not a 100G antenna, a satellite with 100 100G antennas. And then, basically, I would never have to worry about communications ever again. That'd be pretty cool. How are we doing here? We got a minute. How's our fuel here? We got a minute. Eh, it'll work, I think. It'll get us mostly to where we're going. More or less. Less or more. Lesser or more. Come on, dreidel. Do your schwitz. Okay. So yeah, that that closest approach is what we're going for. Once we get kind of near... I think my mouth is bleeding. What is that? Why do I keep tasting that? It's weird. Anyway. Alright, we're pretty close. Alright. Once we're close enough where I deem close enough to be. Get rid of this. Alright, that's good. That's that's lovely. That's what I like to see. And chaching ba da bing. Okay. Let's see, how's this looking? How's this looking? That's pretty far out there, buddy. Alright. Let's try pointing this way. Does this help us? No, but at least we know. Does this help us? Yes. Very much so. Uh -huh -huh. There we go. Bring it in. Just a wee. Just a wee. Alright. 200k. That's reasonable, I think. 200,000. We're basically trying to do a gravity break here, trying to use the gravity of this planet to help slow our orbit down. Well, okay, obviously that's doing a terrible job. Is that the way we want to... We want to be on the other side of the planet, don't we? Is this the way we want to go? No. Let's go this way. So I guess if we bring that to the other side of the planet, that should help to bring that orbit in just enough. Just a few hundred feet above ground, I don't care. Alright, 14k. That should bring our uh, orbit in, shouldn't it? Yes, that's right. That's the correct size, or the correct side of the planet. Alright. So that leaves only one thing, and that is to get there. But of course, before we do that, I want to see how close we can get. 14, eh, 11, eh. Alright, that's good. That looks good. We're not intersecting the ground or anything. That'll work. That'll work for me. That's our exit. That's our entrance. Let's go to Moho. Yeah! Alright, looking good, looking good. Where's our satellite? There it is. It's called Jewel Interceptor only by name. Because its actual mission is to intercept Moho. Perfect example of Kepler's laws of planetary motion there. So Moho has to go around like a full circle and then another circle. So that's two times the area that it would normally go. And this guy's taking the long route, so he's... Able to go slower while covering the same area. Oh, is he going to lose the signal? 
He should have lost signal, but he didn't. Impressive. All right, here we go. Now we're in the ground term. Ground term? What is the ground term? No one ever told me this. All right, we are not intersecting the ground quite, so I deem that a successful orbit. Out of maneuver. Let's just bring that nice and far out there. Give me an orbit if you do not mind. That'll work. Okay, so this is predicting we will not have enough fuel. I'm saying, yeah, that's probably true. But, I still want to try. Oof. Worst case scenario, we have a good communication satellite sort of deal. I mean, it's not necessary. But it's... it's something. Alright, dreidel. As I keep calling it for some reason. Away we go. Oh no, this isn't going to hit the ground, is it? Eh, it'll be fine. Alright, so... wow, look at that. Nothing to worry about here, just... Heading literally towards the only mountain on the horizon. That's nothing to worry about there. No, not at all. Not at all. Why would you be worried about that? Um, we got to do a Delta V of 2000. So I'm thinking if I was to bring one of those other one of those other engines that just has like one of those insane accelerations, that might help us. Even if we have extra fuel, just just uh, I don't know. Oh, wow. Look at that. 6,000 meters. Oh, jeez. We're just barely missing that. Look at this. It's on the same height. We would have smacked off the ground on that thing. Look at that sucker. Ooh. I don't even want to think. All right. How is our... Uh... Ooh, that's not looking so good. Nope. Me thinks we're not going to get an orbit here. <laughs> I like that. We literally head towards the only mountain on the horizon. Uh, we should have started this burn a lot earlier. Well, that proves that there is no atmosphere around Moho. Uh, what about temperatures? Where is the temperature sensor? I swear this thing had a temperature sensor. There we go. What's it looking like? Ooh, not bad. Eh, that's a first. Why not? To start, we all gotta start somewhere. Uh, this, yeah, it's not gonna exit. So we can take a look at this. Uh, so as we can see, here's our apogee slowly moving in. We've gotta bring this relatively close to this. It doesn't have to be on top of it, but it's just gotta be close. Doesn't look like it's moving at all. If at all. So that is likely not going to work for us. So that's interesting. It's easier to get to Jewel than it is to get to Moho. We have an interesting, interesting little property here. Now, if we had done a gravity assist off of Eve, then that might have been significantly helpful. But uh, yeah, it's just once you get uh, you get close to that sun. It's changing your apogee that's that's really eating up the fuel here. So yeah, we're about to run out of that. That's kind of expected, I guess. But that that does give us some some interesting challenge. How are we going to take care of that? I wonder. Yeah, this. Uh... No, nope, not even close. Not even close to being slightly elliptical. So let's go back. We need some kind of like... Yeah, how are we going to do this? So we got this guy on the top here. This is a, its own unit, basically. Uh huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. How are we going to do this? We got, yeah, we got this Rhino engine. That's efficient. That's super efficient. We got this engine, which is also super efficient. Just that... Mm, 
Okay. Whenever you have any kind of problem, throwing money at it always helps. Let's do that. Alright, that should help us at least a little. Aside from that... I don't know, I kind of want to just put a little extra fuel on this guy. This is, uh, this is a prime example of throwing money at the problem. Uh, where are we? Here we go. This is the guy. No oxidizer. Here we go. And... Just for good luck. Or for good measure. More for good luck. There. Alright. This ought to work. So we've thrown some money at the problem. And basically we expect that to uh, make everything better. This is slightly overkill. How much money did I just blow on this thing? I, I didn't even look. Um... Yeah, getting to Moho, that's that's actually a challenge compared to getting to Jewel. Whoa, that's that's an interesting camera view. Alright. Fingers crossed, we don't blow up. Oh we maybe might go deaf. But we definitely did not blow up. Okay, just get this a little bit. Little bit, little bit. There, that'll work, I guess. No, let's keep it there. All right. Just at a bit of an angle so that it doesn't come back down and you know blow up the launch pad, because that has happened before. Um, let me see. This doesn't appear to be getting as as good of acceleration as it got when we only had four engines. Strangely enough. Although it is getting the altitudes. If I add any more fuel to this thing, I won't be able to call it a dreidel. I don't know why I called it that in the first place, actually. Look at this. We're about to break Mach 5. And we're in atmosphere. Woo! Alright, we've broken Mach 5. That's close to Mach 5, anyway. Alright, okay, I take it back. Looks like... Uh, sorry about that. Looks like this might take us out of atmosphere. Uh, let's just drop it there. And see how we're looking. Eh, we're looking not so bad. Looking not so bad. Okay, uh, plug your ears. This is so loud. Alright, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, get rid of this. Get rid of this. Oh, no. Oh, they're going to blow up the engine the second I kick this thing into full gear. Hold on. There we go. All right, we're good, we're good. We are good. How are we looking? All right, we're doing all right. We're doing okay. Not quite breaking the atmosphere, but getting close to it. Would it actually take less fuel? No. No, to go to Jewel and then to try and bop it to Moho, it would probably take considerably more fuel. What am I thinking? Just that you can bring that apogee in a lot easier when you're at a high... A high, Or you can bring that perigee in a lot easier when you're at a high apogee. So I was thinking. But no, then you got to bring a high apogee and that's, that's going to be worse. Okay. Where are we looking here? Not bad, not bad. Not bad at all, my friends. Okay, okay. Methinks so we can do this. Got a maneuver. This time I'm not going to bother lining up the uh, sending or descending notes. It doesn't matter to me anymore. Okay, how's this? This is too close. Just a wee bit. There we go. Alright. Point us at the maneuver, if you please. And we will warp there. Uh, Any time. Uh, 
So how's everybody doing out there? Good week? Good day? Exams? I know I'm finished my exams. Happy for that. About to head home for the holidays. Don't know what I'm going to be walking into. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Oh. Oh. No. Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh. God. Son of a bastard. That was such a waste of goddamn time. Oh, my God. Jeez. Put out the freaking solar panel. Like, like, come on. That is just bollocks to the nth degree. Jeez. Clearly, I'm not having a good day. Um, oh, my God. I cannot. That took, like, five minutes to get there. And I didn't put out the, the damn solar panel. Like, what is wrong with me? Oh, my God. Just, ugh. Stick a fork in me. Honestly, there should be a way to just put out the solar panels. I mean, they let you do full and not full thrust. Okay, I could have done that. I could have used the thrust to generate enough electricity. Because you turn on the engines, the engines generate electricity. I could have, yeah, I could have hit said. Hindsight. Could have hit said. That would have charged up the batteries enough that I could have put out one of the solar panels. And then that would be enough to put out the others. I... I'm not smart. Let's uh, let's just leave it there for now. All right. Keep this point in prograde. Hopefully, this time I do not mess up in such an obvious way. So I think three thousand was escape velocity or something, right? Deploy. And away we go. All right. Speaking of away, the second I get back, I must put the solar panels out this time. Woof, I've got a headache. Yipes. All right. Okay, this is looking good. This is looking good. Looking for that 3,000 escape. We'll be out of here in 3, 2, 1, no time. Thank you so much. Solar panels, now. Now, I said. Now. Where is it? Where? One of them died? Wait. Okay, one of my solar panels broke. No idea how. Lucky thing I got three others. Where did it go? When did it break? I, uh, well, it is what it is. We got the solar panels out. We're on our way. Got a little bit more fuel this time, so hopefully that'll be of some use to us. Bring this in. It's not too far, but not too close. Eh, bring it out a little. Why not? We can adjust that as much as we need to, just as long as we get an intersection at that point. That's all we really care about. Uh, other than that, pointing at that maneuver point. Plenty of comms. Let's get this as uh, reserve fuel. Looking good. Just in general, I'm looking good. I, I know that I look nice. No, I've got a. I got to shave sometime. Or should I? Should I just go the next? I don't know, seven, eight months, just not shaving. I bet I could do it. I don't think anyone would say anything. It's like when you don't shower for a week, you know. And it's like, yeah, you know that there's probably a smell that people can notice after you haven't showered for a week. 
But the point is, nobody is going to mention anything. I could be wearing underwear that hasn't been washed in six months. No one is going to mention anything. Like, no one's going to even say it because they risk sounding rude. And it's weird that, you know, manners... Just, you know, it's supposed to be a two-way street, but if one of them, well, one person doesn't follow it, then it's not like it's gonna. Uh, this is this is uh, what's what's the word? Bad life advice, bad advice, Mallard. I don't know. If you don't shower, no one's gonna mention anything. You know. Eventually, you know, people aren't gonna want to be around you, but. It's not like they're gonna they're gonna open their mouth and say, "Oh, what reeks?" It's um, it's, you know, you might just turn around and say, "Hey, it's glandular." That's uh, I discovered that during exam times, basically, because I know that I didn't shower for at least a week, and if I can smell myself, <laughs> I can't imagine whatever what everyone else is thinking. But, uh, again, no one said anything. It's beautiful. Alright, we're looking good, looking good. About to get the intercept. The interceptor. Let's get there. Alright, looking good, my friend. We're going to set that as our target. We're going to try and just... Swing it in. Oh dear. Ah, I wish I could adjust this better. I can't see how close that or it looks pretty close though. It looks very close, like almost dead on. If I do this, will I eventually get an encounter? Theory says I should. Will we get an encounter? That's... We should. The thing is, we... We 100% should... Since we're right on the ascending node as we're doing this. The problem is, when that will be... Is unclear. Urgh. No, it doesn't look like it's gonna at least tell us. I mean, come on. We know that by now we should have had an encounter. So it's not going to tell us. Physically, there has to be an encounter at some point. Just that this doesn't want to tell us when that point will be. That's a little bit disappointing. That's very disappointing, my friend. Okay. Well, I'll leave that there. I'll point at the maneuver. It's got to tell us sometime. Because we know this is intercepting the orbit. It's just at a single point. It's so close. I'm going to have to warp there before it'll actually give me any information that's useful. So, without a further ado... That's seven minutes? Something's not right about that. All right, away we go. It's like, yeah, these orbits are intercepting at a singular point. You don't expect it to be too accurate, but you expect it to give you maybe some information. If it could tell me where Moho was going to be in its orbit by the time I get here, that would be enough. Unfortunately, we do not get such information on Kerbal Space. We, uh... are going to kind of infer a lot here. How we doing? How we doing? Okay, there we go. All right, so we are out by a little bit, but not enough that it should matter. Um, let me do this. Hold on. Can I? Can I bring that in just a wee? I could. Oh, that's that's a terrible spot to do it though. Okay, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to go out again. Hold this retrograde. Let's just. Let's kick it into high gear for just a wee bit. 
Wait, hey, what? Okay, here we go. 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 Yeah. All right. Bring us at least a little bit closer than Eve, and I'll be happy. How's our fuel? Uh, our fuel is not good at all. Okay, that'll work. Well, that won't. But uh, okay, well, yeah, we'll bring it in just a wee bit more. Closer than Eve. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Closer than Eve. There we go. Now. We'll have to do this from the descending note. Oh, jeez, we're looking right in the sun, man. Put on your sunglasses. Yipes. All right. I want to know exactly how much I'm doing here. Is that enough? That's almost, almost, but not quite. Oh, yeah, that should be enough. Look at that. Look at that. Look at how close we are. That ought to register. Oh, that's too far. That is... Spot on. Oops. Like that's about as close as you're gonna get. If it can't calculate a, a position from that, which look at that, it can. It can calculate it now. That's exactly what we were looking for. So seven point two meters per second. That's zero seconds of burn time. Let's thrust limit this. Come on, thrust limit. Thrust limit, man. Thrust limit. Thrust limit it once it slows down. Here we go. Thrust limit it to 10%. That's one second of burn. Yipes. All right. This should give us at least some information on target approach. And then we can adjust this accordingly. This will be nice if it works. I hope it does. Oh, pretty close. Pretty close. Not looking for anything big. Looking good, looking good. That's about, is that, that's giving me info at least. So we go here. All right, that's what I'm looking for. We bring this around. Bring it around town. All right. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Right there. Right there. Okay. That'll give us an encounter without taking too much fuel. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, wow. Look at all these. I should just stop showing unknown objects. It's kind of hard. Hard to focus with all of that. Okay, we're looking good though. We're looking real good. Whoops. Uh, we're not looking good at all. My bad. What? Ooh. I'll fix it. Come on. Go, I say. Okay, you're saying four minutes. I'm saying I don't want to wait that long. Looking good, looking good. Looking good indeed. All right. And boop. There we go. Let's kick it into high gear. All right. Like how how am I supposed to capture that or that? Like these these things are like on an escape trajectory from the sun. I'm never gonna catch that. It's just it's it's distraction materials. What it is. So we're gonna try and bring this in about as well as we can. I don't I don't know how well this is gonna work out, but at least this time we have like additional fuel. We also have additional structure, which is heavy. But with any luck, this additional fuel should bring us within striking distance. All right. Oh, hello, hello. What do we got? 
got an encounter. All right. Where is Moho now? So we got a lot of extra fuel with this. Uh, I'm going to go out here and just kind of, I don't know. Not that. Not that. No, we want. Oh, where'd you go? Oh, yeah. Get back there. Thank you. All right. Oh, that is way off. Look at that. That's like a polar orbit. Oh. That scared me. <laughs> Thanks for following, man. Always appreciate it. Uh, how am I going to do this? This is like a polar orbit that we're looking at here. Uh, it's kind of... Oh, there we go. Hello. How close are we? It's just... Uh, whoa. Okay, well, I kind of, you know, I kind of want to fine-tune this if I can. But I'm not going to be able to, so... Well, let me auto-warp. I want to go there. We'll see how that goes. So the uh, follower just now, Mirror-esque. Thank you for following. All right. Looks good. Sort of. All right, we're on the approach. All right, we got about a thousand fuel left over. This should... Looking at how close our orbit is now, this should be more than enough to get us an orbit on Moho. And yes, I am kind of hexing it, but I honestly think we're going to get an orbit out of this. I honestly think we're going to get something here. Wow. Oh, look at that. The game even thinks so. We got enough fuel. We're, we're good, we're good, we're great. That is cha-ching, bada-bing, baby. Okay. 65 and 7, 65, 4 and 53, 65, 5 and 5. Okay. It's going to be interesting. We're going to have to start burning about here. But we're going to get that orbit. We're going to get an orbit of uh, Moho. We're going to do it, and it's going to be awesome. And we're going to warp. And we're going to complete that Sentinel mission while we're at it. Which is worth, like, millions. Yeah, so I guess we're at an eccentric orbit. We're going to be at an extremely... Extremely, as you can see, inclined... Orbit here. It's insanely inclined. Uh, or the inclination is insane, I guess I should say. The angle relative to the orbit is... Yeah. But we're going to have an orbit which is worth it. A little bit closer here. There we go. All right, let's go. So, that's going to be like roughly seven minutes of burn. <laughs> I like that. We're going to be burning for seven minutes here. What's our acceleration like anyway? Our acceleration is at 4.1 meters per second squared, and we're making a delta V of 1,700. Crazy. I guess I can talk about some stuff that happened this week. Um, I had a crazy driver. So I'm driving along in my lane. And, you know, traffic is stopped on the right, so I'm slowing down. I'm going about 30 because I don't want someone to pull out in front of me. And, you know, they don't pull out in front of me, but they try to pull into the side of my vehicle. I'm like, wow. Yipes. That was a close one. Uh, yeah, I mean, if they were pulling out in front of me, that'd be one thing. Like, then I could slow down and stop. But they were trying to merge into the side of me, which can Yeah, that kind of messes things up. Um, I guess my life isn't all that interesting. Whoa, what's in my throat? Oh, hold on. Well, what I do have is some interesting life stories. I think I have that sheet of paper sitting around somewhere. So I'm going to throw a dart at it if I can find it. 
We'll get that uh, two seconds. Well, I don't think I can find it. Maybe I should just, uh, uh, I can think of something on the spot. Someone once mashed my face in the mud when I was three. Never mind, I found it. All right. This is a random story with the 404 guy, uh, as you can hear. I got my paper here. Uh, this has a paper basically full of all the stupid things that have happened in my life and uh, stuff that makes kind of an interesting story. So I'm going to throw a dart here and we'll see what we get. Alright, I guess if I'm going to put down a piece of paper and throw a dart at it, Putting it in front of a fan is a pretty bad idea. I just marked up my floor something fierce. I'm going to put it on my chair because there's no cross breeze. Oh boy. You're not going to want to hear this story. This is about the time that I drained Lake Erie. So as I'm sure you're well aware, there's uh, North America, a set of lakes known as the Great Lakes. You have Lake Erie, Lake Huron, Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, uh, Lake Ontario, uh, on Huron, Erie, Michigan, Ontario, Lake something or other, I think. Anyway. The great freshwater lakes, right? That's where we get a lot of our water from. This is the time that I, I accidentally drained all of Lake Erie. Um, I was like five, and my brother and sister decided to uh, put a dare on me. They dared me to flush the toilet 100 times. I'm like, ugh. Oh. <laughs> That's easy. I, I could do that in my sleep. I do that every day anyway. So I'm doing that, and... Uh, I think I got through to 75. And my dad just yells at me like, What the heck? How many times have you flushed that toilet? I'm just like, oh my god. I was five. I mean, I was I was doing a dare. But, uh... Yeah, I basically... However much water that wasted... And that was back then when they didn't have low flows. That probably, you know, it's not inconceivable to think that I probably drained a significant portion of Lake Erie on a single day. Alright, how are we doing here anyway? Doing alright, we're doing okay. Got a bit of a headache, but we're doing alright, alright. We're gonna get that orbit. Trust me, we're gonna get there. Yep. I named all of them? Seriously? Holy crap! Huh. I didn't even know. I didn't. I didn't realize there was an acronym for that. I guess uh, that the Great Lakes are the homies, without the I. The Great Lakes homes, awesome. Anyway, yeah, maybe not the most interesting story. I got plenty others here. Let's see. There's the time that I, uh, I peed in the gym. There's, uh, there's the time that I accidentally killed a canary by farting. Um, yeah. A lot of interesting stories. Most of them for another day. How close are we to this? 49 seconds. Very close. Very close indeed. So we made it to Moho. And it actually took more fuel than if we were to go to Jewel. Next episode, I'm thinking Elu. Never been to Elu in my life. Whoa, what the what, what was that? Okay. Never been to Elu in my life. Same can be said about Moho, though. I've never been to Moho. 
on any playthrough of Kerbal Space Program that I've done. So this is a first for me. I've definitely never landed on Moho, which is going to have to be another day as well. Uh, what we're going to do here, we're just going to send some temperature data home. Something worth writing home about, I imagine. What's the temperature out there? Let's see. 500 Kelvin in the sun. I tell you. That's like a weather forecast right there. Well, the weather for today is going to be 500 degrees. Partly cloudy with chances of sulfuric acid rain. Anyway. We done it. Is that a, does that count as a world first? It better. Oh, wait. That was at the top. World first. Did I get anything for that? Did I get any money? Did I at least pay off the rest of this mission? Sort of. Uh, yeah, we paid off a little bit. Somewhat worth it. But anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this episode, I think. I uh, should start preparing for that presentation i got to give Tuesday. So that's going to be it for now. I'll be back tomorrow, probably around noon. I'm thinking that tomorrow I'm going to be doing City Skylines, though. Because uh, I haven't played that in a while, and I kind of want to. So tune in tomorrow if you feel like it. If not, then, well, it doesn't matter to me. Have fun anyway, and uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thanks for following if you followed, and uh, feel free to have a great day. Uh, not like that you shouldn't have to feel free. Have a great day. I'm the 404Guy, 7HE404GUY. Goodbye. I like that I can just nonchalantly just kind of mention offhand that I peed in the gym once. That was when I was, uh, I think it was seven. That is an excellent story. It is, it is harrowing. It is, it is to be worn as a badge of honor. But it is also to be told on another day. I'm going to keep this in a more noticeable spot, too. Keep on rocking, everyone.